Hello everybody, I'm glad to announce that Sprite Wizard now can import animations from any sprite to animation players, animated sprites or as standalone sprite frames. A Sprite Wizard used the A Sprite CLI to generate a sprite shape. You might need to go to Project Tools A Sprite Wizard config and set the right path for the A Sprite command. In the README, you can find a few examples that may help you to find the path for your command. In this new version, there is this test button to test if your configuration is right. If you click the button, you should see the version for your A sprite. In case the path is wrong, you'll get a message telling you that the command was not found. If everything is alright, just click save and that's it. Let me start by the animation player flow. So for this flow, you need to create a sprite and an animation player. When you select a sprite, you should see an A sprite section in the inspect dock. So you need to select the animation player where the animations should be added to, and also the A sprite source file. There are a few extra options I will cover in a minute, but now just click import, and you should see all the animations you have in A sprite in your animation player. Okay, so let me go through the main options here. Output folder and output name uh, are very self-explanatory. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that the animation in Goto doesn't have the background as the animation in a sprite. The reason for that is because there is a previous configuration I had there and I forgot to remove. When working on an animation, it's not uncommon to have reference layers, like backgrounds and other objects but usually you don't want those layers to be part of your final animation. So with this plugin, there are three different ways to prevent them from being imported. The first one is the one you just saw it, where I have this exclusion pattern. I like to use an underscore at the end of the layer name, so I know that any layer that ends with an underscore shouldn't be included in my final animation. And if you see here, this is configured in my exclusion pattern. So you can change to whatever you want or you can remove it. So the reason this was here is because if you go back to the configuration screen, you can see that there is this default exclusion pattern. And that's basically, uh, if you use always the same pattern, you can just configure it in here. So any new sprite will contain the same configuration. Uh, if you don't want that, just remove it. In fact, this comes empty by default. The second way you can remove uh, undesired uh, layers is by using the only visible layers options. So if you select this thing and you hide the layer, it's not included in your final animation. So that's okay for like a quick uh, import, but honestly, it takes away from automation, so you shouldn't really use it very often. The third option is to use the layer fuel. You see it says all in here. If you click here, it's going to list all the layers in your source file. You can just choose one and that's it. This layer option here is actually useful in different situations. Like, so for example, you might have a file like this one, this pigeon file. If you see, I have different versions of the same pigeon. And for me, it was way easier to create all of them in the same source file. So now I can just come to my sprites and select the version I want and import each one as separated objects. So now each pigeon is a different object. I can even play different animations for each one of them. So this one is eating while this one is just looking around. The other use case is to have a layered character, like this one where I have the body, the head and the helmet. So I will select my character here and for this one I will just include the body. Now I will duplicate this one, I will select the head, I will duplicate it again and select the helmet. So now if I press play you see that they are in sync. Here's something interesting. You notice that I didn't change the animation player. I used the same animation player for all the layers for those three different sprites. So the plugin tries to not be destructive. So when it identifies that an animation already exists, it only includes the new track to it. The same happens if you try to delete. If you delete an animation that has more tracks, 
uh, the animation won't be deleted, only the track that refers to that sprite. In cases where the sprite track is the only one available, the animation will be removed. Okay, now there are just two other features to talk about this flow. You may have already noticed that the node is keeping track of all the configuration, so you can come back to this and just press import and it should use the same configurations you've done before. Obviously, if you rename the animation player, you won't find it, but you can just change it in here, press import, and things should work as expected. So the last feature is about looping animations. You, you may have noticed that in this animation I'm using here, death doesn't loop, while running loops. So in a sprite, there is no concept of looping and non-looping animation. Everything loops by default. The way I can make the plugin understand is by using a convention. So if you go to the configuration screen, you'll see that there are two fields in there. One is the default loop configuration. By default, all animations will loop unless they use the exception prefix. If the default configuration is looping, uh, anything with an uh, underscore as prefix won't loop. If you look at the death animation in a sprite, there is an underscore in there. When it's imported to Goto, it removes the underscore, so you have a clean name for your animation and that's not tied to if it loops or not. Uh, and then here, you, if I change it in there, here you can see that the loop is not there anymore. I can change this configuration, I can say that I don't want any of the animations to loop and the pattern to make it loop, the prefix, it's loop underscore. It doesn't need to be a single character, it can be like as this, like a, a whole word. So now if I go back to my source file and I change this animation to have loop in front of it, now I will re-import it. Now you see that this animation is looping while the other animations are not. And that's pretty much all for animation players. Now let's talk about animated sprites. For animated sprites, there are three different ways you can import your animations. Well, the first one and the simplest one is quite similar to the animation player. It's just that you don't need to select any animation player in here. It's just, you just select the source file and that's it. All the other configurations are the same. You can also see here that this animation is looping, this one is not looping, so everything is in place. So the second way to import animations to animated sprites is by using the A Sprite Wizard Dock. This is actually the old way and it's still quite valid because for this one you can create standalone resources that you can um, bring to your animation players as you need and you can even add it uh, programmatically. So the options here are pretty much the same as the ones in the docs. The only different relevant option here is they split layers in multiple resources. So let me use my character as an example. I will import this character, I'll create an output folder called character, and I will split all the resources. So if you follow my devlog, you may have seen that I use a layered approach for my characters. And the way I achieve that is exactly like this. I use this dock to import new costumes and then via code in runtime, I load those resources when required. So if you go to the configuration screen, when you select a new costume or a new outfit, it actually loads the new resource for you. So the third method is the simplest one and it's also the one that I don't recommend you to use and by using the automatic importer. So if you go to the configuration screen again, you can select the option enable importer and now any A sprite file in your project will be identified as a sprite frame resource. So you can just uh, use it directly in an animated sprite or you can even open it and see it. So there are a few reasons why I don't recommend this approach. Uh, the main one is that files imported this way, they are usually bigger than they should be. Uh, and this is due to the way they are imported. Uh, I won't go in details here, but it's a workaround required for Goto to know about this external generated image. The second problem is that you very often see outdated resources in the editor. As you can see, I'm still seeing the old version here in the editor, but if I decide to run my project, as you can see, the head now is red as the one in my source file. 
The third reason I don't recommend this approach is because uh, there are a few issues that were reported in the past where people were seeing the sprites as black boxes. This was only happening when exporting the project. Everybody that reported the problem said that eventually it went away, but it's just something that you will lose some time like trying to find the source of this problem and it's not clear to me what's happening here. So I intend to remove the automatic importer in the next major version. If we use it, don't worry, you can still use this version. It's stable enough. It's just that you won't see it in future versions. So if you like this plugin or you found this update useful, please consider supporting me by subscribing to the channel. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.